Good afternoon. Once again, this is Jim Anderson, and my wife Lois is with me, and we're talking about the theology of rest. And I'll say it again, God likes us when we rest. This chapter, or I should say session, is entitled, Rest, the Pleasure of His Sabbath. What do I mean by that? Well, I actually titled my book after this session. The name of the book is, For God's Sake, Rest. And uh, we actually see that rest, Sabbath, is not just for man because man gets tired, but God takes pleasure in His Sabbath. That is, we are to enjoy the gift of God, Sabbath, or the concept of rest, but God also takes pleasure in this concept of rest as we enter it with Him. He's waiting for us to join Him in Sabbath rest. Rest, the pleasure of His Sabbath. Now, to introduce this topic, I must point out some verses that are very key. And you'll find this phrase, Sabbath to the Lord, again and again throughout the Scriptures. You find it in Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. He said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. We've talked already about how rest is a holy thing. But this rest is not just to ourselves. It is unto God as an offering, we could say. So bake what you want to bake, as we looked at this chapter earlier, and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. Exodus chapter 16, verse 25, again we find the same phrase. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. It's like an offering unto God, something that will give Him pleasure. You will not find any of it, referring to the manna, on the ground today, on the seventh day, on the Sabbath that is unto the Lord. And then Exodus chapter 20, and you find this in both places where the commandments are listed, the Ten Commandments. Here in Exodus 20 verse 10, But the Sabbath day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. Again, Sabbath to the Lord, an offering unto Him. And for that reason I called the book, For God's Sake Rest, because I found that many books about rest were written purely for the sake of human beings, that God has given you the Sabbath, and it is true. He gives the Sabbath, but it's not just for our good, it's for God's pleasure as well, for He's waiting to enjoy the time with us. Focusing on human needs. I found that when I was in college, I studied psychology, and I found that there was a law by the name of Maslow, Abraham Maslow, a psychologist, he made a hierarchy of human needs. And they're basically basic psychological needs, safety needs, belonging needs, love needs, esteem needs, and he listed it. Uh, needs to know and understand, uh, aesthetic needs, and we're not going to define all of these, but you get the picture. And so there are many, many needs I have as an individual, I am so needy. I have so many needs, inside and out. There's, I, I found that, when am I ever going to have all my needs met? And I could spend my whole life just climbing the pyramid of needs. Would I finally, by age uh, 50 or 60 or 70, finally get to the top where all my needs were met? As soon as one need was met, I found another need arose. And I came to the conclusion that I could work at meeting my needs my whole life and I would still be a needy person, apart from finding satisfaction in God, which I've talked about in other settings many times, and I'll talk about it, about it again later. But if my focus is simply on my needs, I will always have my focus on needs, because I can always find another thing I need. 
when I have one meal, I want another one right after it because I think I need it and, and so forth. So you get the idea. If needs are our focus, there's no end of it. We'll never get out of the trap of meeting our human needs. Focusing on human needs. The problem with focusing on human needs is that once one human need is addressed, another rises uh, within the human body, soul, mind, screaming to be satisfied. As an end result, we spend our entire lives climbing up Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, never peering very far beyond ourselves. So we become self-absorbed people because of our needs. Uh, granted, there are serious needs for food and clothing, housing. We have serious needs, but uh, the needs can go on seemingly forever. But when pleasing God is our focus, when we focus first and foremost on pleasing God, God begins to meet our essential needs in bunches and others seemingly melt away. When we focus on God, as he has promised to supply according to our needs and riches in Christ Jesus, then our needs seem to dissipate, seem to lessen, disappear. Yes, we still need to eat, we need to sleep and so forth. There are basic human needs. He has promised to meet our needs. We are not to be consumed, however, by our every need. Rest, God's gift to man. We have this emphasis throughout the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, and Lois again is going to assist me by reading a number of passages that talk about uh, God giving rest to us. I'm going to be reading um, about seven passages from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Exodus 16, 21 through 30. Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where he is on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. And then Exodus 33:14. the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. 1 Kings 8.56 Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. 2 Chronicles 20.30 And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. Psalm 127.2 it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. And Isaiah 63, 14, like cattle that go down to the plain, they were, re they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people to make for yourself a glorious name. And from the New Testament, Mark 2, 27 and 28. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So from the repetition of these verses, you get the picture that God has definitely given rest to man in the form of a day, the seventh day, or as we'll find out later on, it might be the first day, as in Sunday, but a rhythm of rest, God gives rest to man, and we have to get that concept through to ourselves and not refuse the gift of rest that he's given us. But once we have enjoyed rest and realize that it is a good thing, and as we were talking about earlier on the break, not feeling guilty about rest, for years I felt guilty about rest. I could not rest my mind, my soul, because I could always think about something else I could or should be doing. Always something more. And just as a mother's job is never done, I was a pastor, I'm still a pastor. A pastor's job is never done. There's always someone else to visit. Always more work to be put into a sermon to make it better. There's always some administrative job to be done to call someone 
and make sure that events happen as planned. And, and there's a, a pastor's job is never done. A mother's job is never done. There's always something more that can be done. And if we get in the habit of not breaking, we, we, we'll feel guilty. God doesn't want us to feel guilty when we finally go to bed to rest. We don't want to sleep out of guilt. We don't want to work out of guilt. Guilt is not a very healthy way to live. If we've sinned, we go to God with our sin and our guilt and He takes it away. But often it's a false kind of guilt when God means for us to rest in happiness we're robbed of that rest because of guilt. And Satan uses guilt in a false way. Sometimes people in our churches or families guilt us into doing things. Uh, one person doesn't rest because the other is still working. Do you ever feel that way? If your friend is working, how can you work? Because you feel guilty for not working. And, and we prod one another until we understand that God gives rest as a gift. So I'm repeating myself, but we have to hear it again and again, that God gives us rest. And he repeats it in his word again and again and again until we get the picture that I give it to you, I want you to enjoy it. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.